So you're about to do maintenance work on a piece of equipment. In order to do that, you'll have to remove some fixed guards. This is one of those scenarios, like when you risk getting caught in moving machinery, or you're cleaning in a zone surrounded by mechanical or other energy sources that could cause injury. That requires lockout, tagout, or lotto procedures. Let's discuss the step-by-step -step process of executing lotto procedures while safely performing your work. First, prepare. Ask yourself appropriate questions. What are you working with? Does the equipment only have electrical and pneumatic energy? Or does it have several different sources? Can you use the applicable lotto procedures to figure out the type and magnitude of all the energy sources? Here at Abbott, you could be dealing with mechanical, electrical, pneumatic, chemical, gravity, stored, potential, or thermal energy. You must identify the energy sources. Missing one of those energy sources can lead to a significant injury if you fail to disconnect the equipment. Clear the area of all non-essential personnel and tools. If barriers are needed, set those up and gather your necessary equipment, like locks, lotto devices, tags, PPE, ladder, tools. Communication is always a key component of working safely. It's crucial that you notify others. Reactivation of an energy source by someone who's unaware of the activity is a common cause of lotto injuries. Safely shut down the equipment. You must de-energize the equipment, and if residual chemical content is present, remove the chemicals and thoroughly rinse the system before closing valves and placing locks tags. You also need to isolate energy sources, turn off valves, flip circuit breakers, throw a disconnect switch, block a fan or hatch. When you're figuring out how to isolate the energy source, make sure you reference and follow the lotto work procedure or instructions for the details. Now you'll apply the appropriate lockout devices, such as locks, covers, and or chains and identification tags, and the appropriate lotto equipment. You must attach your facility's designated lotto lock and tag to the equipment. Then make sure you place the key for that lock on your person. No matter what, never transfer your lotto key to anyone else. Why? When you're using the designated lotto lock, everyone in the facility knows that they are prohibited from attempting to restart the equipment. Applying your lock communicates your activity and purpose. Plus, you place a physical barrier against reactivation of the equipment. You take control of your own safety. Then it's time to release stored energy, which can also cause injury. This can be accomplished by bleeding air pressure or neutralizing residual chemicals. This step is important. Check your work. Try it out. Verify that each step so far has been done correctly. That means that after properly doing a lotto procedure, you confirm that all energy sources are isolated with a physical barrier. You verify that the equipment will not restart, and you are personally in control of the hazardous energy that ensures that equipment can't restart without your awareness. After you check your work, go on to perform your service activity. After all, you've done a whole lot of preparation to accomplish this safely. Let's go over lotto device removal and returning to service. When you're done with your service activity, clear your work area of equipment you used and replace all guarding so that it can be safely operated. Remove your locks and keys. Perform a reverse lotto procedure. A serious reminder, shortcuts can compromise your safety. Always, every single time, fully and completely employ lockout tagout procedures to control hazardous energy and prevent an injury. Let's talk about unique circumstances you might encounter. Line breaking. This is a special type of hazardous energy control because it involves opening a pipe or vessel that could present a chemical, thermal, or pressure hazard. Take precautions, like using personal protective equipment when you need to open a hazardous pipe or vessel. And always understand and follow your site's specific line breaking process. What if the equipment has many energy sources? Plus, it's not just you, it's a group of people performing a service activity on the equipment. In this type of situation, group lotto can be done. With group lotto, it's typical to apply a different lock and tag to each energy source. Then place all the keys from these locks in a lockbox. Then all employees working on the equipment place their own lock on the lockbox while working on the equipment. But in these cases, each person must put their own lock on the energy isolation device. Under no circumstance is it ever acceptable for one person to lock out equipment for another. Group Lotto has many variations. Just remember, 
check your pocket. If you've got the key in there to a lock which controls the ability to re-energize the equipment, then you're protected. What about multiple shift work? Whether it's a situation where you're passing the work onto the next shift, or you're performing a group lotto procedure, it's critical that you maintain continuity of hazardous energy control. Be sure you never leave a lockbox or energy source uncontrolled or unlocked. Usually, one individual is assigned primary responsibility for the lockout. That individual's lock must remain on until the work is complete. What should you do if you can't use a lockout device during your service activity? Can you use just a tag to notify people not to reactivate an energy source? Only if that is the sole option. In other words, this scenario should be avoided as much as possible. If it is the only option, refer to your site's lotto procedure and take special safety precautions. Remember, tags don't provide a physical barrier against reactivation, which severely limits their effectiveness. That covers lockout tag out from A to Z. Now you know how to protect yourself and others against hazardous energy in a safe, efficient, and effective manner.